Hello and welcome to NTD Canada News Election Special Series. I'm your host, Gary Bai. As we continue to bring election coverage today, we will delve a little deeper into the issues. All three parties present how they will revamp the Canadian healthcare system. A poll shows that the Conservatives and the Liberals are neck and neck. And Prime Minister Trudeau steps up and defends a doctor video by his deputy Prime Minister. As the federal leadership race moves into the second week, the spotlight is now on the leader's healthcare promises. And depending on which poll you're looking at, this might just be the top issue that determines how Canadians will vote. What got the party leader's attention could very well be Team Houston's win against the odds in Nova Scotia, where the progressive conservative leader was betting on healthcare spending. After all, it is no secret that the long wait times and inadequate senior care are persisting problems in the Canadian healthcare system. That being said, let's take a look at what each party is promising to improve healthcare for Canada. The Liberals' mandates consist of three main pillars. The first includes improving access to medical care and reducing wait times. This is an extension of one of the Liberals' previous programs, which will cost $14 billion in new investments, as Trudeau announced in Halifax on Monday. Notably, the Canadian Medical Association criticized the implementation of the Liberals' former commitment to increase medical access, saying, quote, They have yet to see any real commitment to this ongoing issue. The Liberals' second pillar aims to address the shortfalls in Canada's long-term care sector, such as staff shortages and bad living conditions. The initiative also promises a $25 minimum wage for personal support workers and is projected to cost a total of $9 billion over a five-year period. And the third pillar, which is yet to be costed, is a promise to introduce 10 days of paid sick leave for all federally regulated workers. It would require changes to the Canadian Labour Code and will allow the workers to take sick days in increments. On the other side of the aisle, the Conservatives are surprisingly set on the course of significant government involvement in health care. They promise to increase spending in health care by boosting the annual growth rate of the Canadian Health Transfer, or CHT, known as the largest transfer of federal funding for health care to the provinces and territories. Currently, the growth rate for this transfer is scheduled to be 3%, and O'Toole said he will raise this to 6% which is equivalent to about $60 billion in federal spending over the next 10 years. Notably, this is more than what the Liberals have budgeted for. Another major theme is mental health, with what it calls the Canada Mental Health Action Plan. The CPC plans to partner with provinces to ensure a stable portion of health funding is dedicated to mental health, encourage employers to add mental health coverage to their employee benefit plans, provide $150 million over the three years in grants to nonprofits delivering mental health programming, and create a nationwide three-digit suicide prevention hotline. In addition, the CPC plans to make Canada one of the best jurisdictions globally for pharmaceutical research and development. The plan will facilitate domestic production of vaccines and medications, encouraging domestic vaccine research and increasing domestic production of critical supplies. The NDP has taken a different approach. In his campaign speeches across the country, Jagmeet Singh has promised to spend billions to create a universal pharmacare program if elected. The NDP leader also calls for expanding universal health care to cover mental health treatment, as well as the end of privatized long-term care and the creation of a public long-term care system. Singh has been critical of Trudeau's health care plan, saying that the Liberal leader is implementing the same cuts to health care as the Conservatives. As with his other mandates, Singh plans to obtain a major part of his health care funding from taxing the super-rich. The People's Party of Canada started its campaign vision by painting a grim outlook of the current health care system. On its website, it states that Canada has the worst wait times of any developed country and that rising healthcare costs now puts pressure on provincial governments. The fundamental problem the PPC claims is that Canada is the only developed country where the government has a monopoly on medically required care. Their plan to reform the system has three parts. First, establish a temporary program to compensate poorer provinces whose revenues from the tax will be lower than the transfer payments they used to receive. Second, have Ottawa give up its goods and services tax and let provincial and territorial governments use these funds. This offers the provinces approximately $40 billion. 
Third, create the conditions for provincial and territorial governments to innovate. The provinces would then be fully responsible for healthcare funding and management and fully accountable for the results, while Ottawa's influence would be kept to a minimum. And last but not least, Green Party leader Anna May Paul released her vision of the healthcare system last week. She promised to revamp the country's long-term care home system and introduce universal pharmacare and childcare. With its projected increase in healthcare spending, the Liberal Party hopes to send a message that it is more committed to public health than any other party. As an unexpected consequence, Liberal leader Justin Trudeau was forced to defend a video posted by Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland that took aim at Conservative Party leader Aaron O'Toole's position on universal healthcare. The video was flagged by Twitter as manipulative media. Freeland posted the video on August the 22nd. It's from a July 2020 interview in which O'Toole was asked to answer whether he would allow provinces to experiment with providing private, for-profit and non-profit services inside universal coverage. In the clip, O'Toole quickly answered yes, followed by, quote, Now let me elaborate more. At that point, the video is edited and skips forward to other selected comments. Freelance English tweet also only mentions for-profit healthcare, omitting the non-profit which was asked in the question and which O'Toole commented on. The edited video was retweeted by Trudeau. And when asked about the video at a campaign stop on Monday, Trudeau defended it, saying it was posted in its entirety. He then accused Aaron O'Toole of supporting for-profit healthcare during the pandemic. The Tories, on the other hand, are asking Elections Canada to investigate the tweet as a violation of the Canada Elections Act, saying the Liberals intentionally altered the original video to misrepresent the Conservative Party's position. And coming up, we have diplomats encouraging the government to prioritize foreign policy, the People's Party of Canada is excluded from election debates, and the latest poll results. But first, please subscribe if you are new to this channel and turn on that notification bell so you won't miss any new videos. We'll be bringing you election coverage from coast to coast in the coming weeks. Thank you for your support. Now, let's get back to our coverage. More than three dozen former diplomats, scholars and experts on Monday penned an open letter urging leaders of all parties to prioritize Canadian foreign policy in the election campaign. Canada's security and prosperity will be contingent on how its political parties define and enact its foreign policy, said the letter. It is imperative that the next government articulate Canada's voice on foreign policy issues and how it will navigate its international relationships in the years ahead. Former Canadian ambassador to China Guy saint jacques was one of the signatories to the letter, which stated that the rise of China will have implications for Canada's interests in the ways that will be difficult to anticipate. According to political writer Shane Miller, it is imperative that leaders understand the Chinese Communist Party is a hostile power and threat instead of a strategic partner, and set forth a proposal to deal with it. The conservative platform takes on the task of countering the CCP's threat. At a press conference on Monday in Ottawa, party leader Aaron O'Toole promised that with the Conservative Party there will be a lot more made in Canada and it will stand up to countries that abuse international trade rules, like Communist China. He stressed that he supports free markets but not with countries that are not aligned with Canada's values and violate workers' rights and commit genocide. So far, the Conservative Party is the only party that has addressed this issue in its detailed platform. The Tories seek to overhaul Canada's approach to foreign affairs. According to Miller, in recent years it has become clear our servo posture towards the CCP is often influenced by elites with connections to the CCP that incentivizes them to advocate policies that only benefit themselves and the CCP. This has allowed the CCP to deepen its influence in Canada and infiltrate Canadian institutions through partnerships with the universities and other business entities. We must stand up to the communist government of China. Our quarrel is not with the people of China, part of an ancient civilization that has contributed much to humanity, the platform states. We stand especially with Chinese Canadians whose contributions to Canada are immeasurable and who are enduring an appalling rise in anti-Asian hate and discrimination. And we stand with Uyghur Muslims, Tibetans, Falun Gong practitioners, Hong Kongers, and Chinese Christians. Instead, our issue is with China's communist government and leadership. The communist leadership represents a clear and rising threat to Canadian interests and our values. 
They've abducted our citizens, targeted our economy, and intimidated members of the Chinese Canadian community, the platform states. Five major political parties will take part in the upcoming debates, excluding the People's Party of Canada. The debates commissioner David Johnston said he will only invite parties who meet one of the following criteria. All parties have to have at least one seat in the House of Commons, or won at least 4% of the national vote in 2019, or received 4% of the national vote after the election date is set. The commission uses data from nine polling companies to determine which parties are eligible to participate. The independent public body refrains from using any party's internal polling or polls commissioned by the party. The Liberals, Conservatives, Green Party, NDP, and Bloc Québécois are able to join the debates in Quebec. But the People's Party falls short of the new criteria. But nearly two years ago, the party joined the debates. At that time, its leader, Maxime Bernier, was an MP. In a statement, Bernier said he is disappointed but not surprised to see the decision made last Saturday. I do not blame the commission whose criteria were clear and objective. Rather, I blame the political establishment cartel, which refuses to debate the crucial issues we raise and has done everything to marginalize us since the founding of the PPC, said Bernier. Bernier added that debate or no debate, you will keep hearing from us. A French-language debate is set to play out on September 8th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. On next day, an English-language event will take place from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. Liberals and Conservatives enter the second week of the election campaign in a dead heat, according to the latest Main Street Research poll. A new poll was conducted between August 20 and 22. This poll shows that 32% of decided and leaning voters nationwide would vote for Liberals, and another 32% would go for Conservatives. This is a one-point loss for the Liberals from the last mainstream poll, while the Conservative Party gained two percentage points. Meanwhile, the NDP lost one point, placing third with 18 points. The People's Party of Canada and Bloc Québécois are also tied with 7%, each up one percentage point from last week. And the Green Party has 3%. With that said, thank you for watching NTD Canada News. If you like this video, please give us a like and share. It will help more people see our channel. We'll be back with more comprehensive election coverage, and we'll see you next time.